I'm Larry Menti. Welcome back to this special edition of Jersey Matters. In the wake of Parkland, how safe are New Jersey schools? A child should feel safe walking through the halls of his school. The question is, after Parkland, how can we make these schools safer? We pose that question here at Central Regional High School to some students. That interview in a moment. But first, our interview with the superintendent of schools here, Trianopolis Parlopanides. After you heard what happened in Parkland, and you heard the details leading up to what happened, did you look at that and say, we can do better here. There, there's some things that we need to do to address what happened in Parkland. Uh, absolutely. You know, first, uh, my heart goes out to that whole community, all the kids, and uh, it really did heighten awareness. Um, you know, after seeing everything uh, that poor that kid had, pleas for help, and nobody kind of picked up on it, and uh, hopefully, it could have been something that could have been avoided. Uh, so we did heighten awareness here. Uh, we do have uh, security measures here at the school. And uh, you know we do talk to our kids, which is always great because uh, our kids talk to our teachers, our admins, everybody, and uh, kind of let us know what's going on in the community. So well, let's go through specifics with what happened in Parkland and 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 how you can learn from it. There were a lot of red flags, as you said. This kid seemed to be waving red flags mm -hmm. all over the place, and the and the school picked up in it. They did a speech, they did a threat assessment. There was some people in the community that picked up on it. Law enforcement was out to visit them, and yet. Nobody was there for him. Where was the breakdown? What would you do in that situation? Um, you know, uh, luckily we have a very uh, good relationship with the uh, police, uh, Chief DeMichael and everybody. Um, I would think after all of those scenarios, and I don't know all, all the details, but uh, you know, searching the home, where, did, where was the rifle held, you know? Um, but wait, can they search his home? They can search his home, if, if especially now, the one good thing about all kids nowadays, they put everything on, on Instagram, on Snapchat. So if he had made threats, you know, on, on the Internet, the police then have, uh, you know, a reasonable suspicion to go there and actually go and search the home to make sure that everybody's safe. But there has to be an actionable threat. There right? has to be an actionable threat either on, on the Internet that he's, I'm going to kill or shoot up the school. Um, then, you know, if somebody, kid, reports it to a school official, school officials, we actually have a memorandum of agreement with our police that we can then notify them immediately, share that information, and they always do a great job of going, talking to the parents, talking to the students, and they do search the homes for weapons, because that's the number. If you're making a threat, we want to make sure it's just an, an idle threat, not a realistic one, so they will search for weapons and everything else. Now, he got into the school because of a fire drill. He mm -hmm. knew there was going to be a fire drill. Mm -hmm. Should you be letting kids know there's going to be a fire drill? Uh, not at all. You should really uh, have unannounced drills uh, as much as possible so that, uh, A, for the kids' sake, so they're practicing correctly, and B, like I said, you don't want to notify anybody that might have bad intentions to know, okay, the kids will be evacuating or the kids will be here or there. So you want to keep that secret. Do you have a gun at this school? Uh, we do have a resource officer in both our middle school and high school, so we do have a friendly officer weapon here, but... Uh, no other guns in the building. Do you think that would help, would have helped in Parkland? I know they had an officer, but he was on the other end of the school. school. So you have an officer here, you have a huge school. Yeah. Is one enough? Um, listen, you could always look to get better. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at 3M film on the, on the, on the doors and so forth. Um, it'd be ideal if we could have two, but there's financial issues that come into play. And I think with the one officer, um, you know, I think that's, that's, we're pretty safe here. Everybody does a good job pulling the doors closed. Everybody has to have a heightened awareness of that. There's a gun so, debate going on, as you know. Yeah. There's some people that say they got to get rid of uh, military-style rifles and, and guns, and there's other people that say they got need more guns in the school. You need the superintendent with a gun. With a gun you need yeah. the teachers with a gun. Uh, Where do you I, fall? I, I draw the line. I, I, teachers are hired to teach. That that job is hard enough as it is, and uh, you know, um, you're here. If the more you make the school look like a prison. Like, you know, if you, if you treat a kid like an animal, they'll behave like an animal. Uh, Pullman, who built the sleeping box cars in the, in the Wild West, people are like, why are you doing it? And, you know, people chew tobacco, spit, everything, they're dirty. And he goes, beauty modifies behavior. So if your school looks good, it's not going to stop every school shooting, but it gives kids a sense of pride in that this is their school, this is their home, they'll take better care of it. They'll let you know what's going on. So I think once you, you know, start bringing in, you know, everybody wants, you know, 10 or 15 men with guns, you change it from a place of education into a prison, and that's not necessarily what you want. You know? Are you confident that you have uh, enough in place where you'd be able to pinpoint a Nicholas Cruz, you'd be able to pinpoint a Dylan Klebold, and you could take action and you keep your kids safe? 
you know, it, it's difficult to say 100%. I mean, we, we constantly look to get better. We're not where we want to be, but we're always adding new security measures, doing drills, and, and hoping to get better. And I pray to God that we never have to deal with a scenario like that, but uh, we'll be as ready as we can be. When you do the drills, you do them with law enforcement? Uh, we do uh, some with law enforcement, some without. We actually had law enforcement here this summer uh, doing our new system. Um, so the system basically, uh, any officer that arrives on the scene, uh, they can look it up on their smartphone. It'll actually have a map of the school, room numbers, everything. So if they're told go to this room, they'll know exactly where they're going. It also identifies where the other officers are. So they'll know if an officer is close in their vicinity. So. Uh, they can work uh, well together and hopefully neutralize a threat much quicker. Do, do most schools in New Jersey have that, most public schools? Um, they're starting to. Um, I would say there's probably, I know in Ocean County there's about a handful that have it, and I know uh, it was a big push for the entire state to actually go to the system. You, you must talk to other superintendents at all the other mm -hmm. schools. This must be something you talk about. Yes. Uh, have you talked about th this since this Parkland happened? Um, we, have, we have, we've talked about this previously, even before Parkland, uh, at our county roundtable, and actually, uh, um, Mr. Coronado, our county prosecutor, he's actually using forfeiture funds to help fund for those schools that maybe can't afford it, because it's not that overly expensive, but he's actually using those funds so that every school district in Ocean County will have this. Do system. you have a wish list? What else would you like? What, what would make this school safer? Um, I, you know, um, right now we have uh, one officer, in each, another officer wouldn't be a bad thing. And then, I, like I said, we're doing some security uh, upgrades with the 3M, with the lights outside. So when we are locked down, it would indicate uh, flash with the lockdown. So we actually have a safety. And when this was prior to everything that happened in Florida, we actually do have a safety committee meeting once a year with our board, with officers, with uh, the administration. We actually see how secure our building is. But this obviously has raised uh, heightened awareness, and we're really trying to make sure all the doors are locked and that uh, you know kids are safe. Because without feeling safe, kids aren't going to learn anything. Have so. parents contacted you since Parkland? Uh, absolutely. I've had numerous phone calls. I've had parents come at night. Uh, you know, not that you know they are trespassing, but I know they're doing it for the good, and they're pulling on doors, trying to find open doors, and they're emailing me, letting me know which doors are open. So it's always a good thing, because then I can contact uh, our uh, maintenance guy, uh, Mr. Pepe, and we make sure everything's locked. You down, understand so. that fear. Though. Absolutely, you understand I understand that. Doing. I understand that. How, how involved do you want parents in all of this? Um, I, parenting is a verb. I, they're the first line of defense. I think the problem is too many parents now want to be friends. So I think parents need to be parents and, and you know, increase create that moral compass and allow students to understand that, you know, uh, they can be friends when they're 25, you know, after they've taught the kids uh, their moral compass and what's right and what's wrong. Um, I think then, you know, so I think it starts with the parents, it starts with the uh, students, the teachers, the admin, the police, all working together to make sure everybody communicates so that, like I said, a lot of these kids will show signs. We got to make sure we don't miss the signs so that if there is oh, this something kids like showed this, signs, signs and they missed the signs. And they expelled horribly. them. And, and they yeah. expelled him from school. Was that the right move? Right. Uh, this kid had anger management issues. He sh really should have been sent to either some groups or something to help him mentally uh, rather than just expelling it and it being the community's problem. I think there's, uh, being in school, I think there's more avenues for, for a student to but get But it wasn't help. just the community's problem. I mean, yeah. you expel a kid with anger issues, yeah, it's you make him angry. angry. And who's he angry at? The school. He's so, yeah, now angry, angry at, at, at you. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't think of it until you brought it up. Yeah that expelling may have been the worst thing they did for this kid. It might have set him off, exactly. But do you have, so let's, let's say, God forbid, you mm -hmm. have a kid like that yeah. here. What steps do you take? Well, we have alternate programs. We have, uh, you know, we have groups. We have counseling. We have all avenues uh, in which we can help a student. So but you pinpoint the kid right pinpoint away the kid and right you away. get him help right away. Get him help right away. And that's even where we're looking at, uh, next year we're looking at going to uh, a principal at every grade level and re uh, moving my administrative team so that now as a freshman you're going to have the same vice principal for four years. So now it will help not only help those kids graduate, but it will identify those kids that maybe are having some issues, maybe have anger issues and so forth, and now that VP can get them help, you know, and make sure we put that student on the right path to success. Superintendent Parlofanides, thank you so much. Thank you this very is much. such an important thing to talk about, and not a lot of people in yeah. school districts want to because they're worried. And, and I really appreciate you yeah. taking the time and talking and about we this. We've got to talk about it, and we've got to get better. So that's it. And when we come back, we're going to talk to a few students from Central Regional High School about their concerns after what happened in Parkland when Jersey Matters continues right after this.